Hi, this is Dr. Tyagarajan, Professor of Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering and Dean Academic of RMD Engineering College. In this video, I am going to explain hardware multi-threading. What is a thread? Thread is a sequence of instructions that can run independently from other programs. When a sequence of instructions are being executed, the processor may have to wait if the next instruction or data is not available. This is called stalling. Instead of waiting, the processor may switch from one thread to another thread, execute it, then come back to the previous thread. This is called multi-threading. So, switching from one thread to another thread is known as multi-threading. In multi-threading, all threads generally share a single address space using a program counter, stack and register states. What is a process? A process includes one or more threads and their address spaces. Here, the address space of each thread may be different, but in multi-threading, the same address space is shared by all the threads. So, switching from one process to another process invokes the operating system. That means, it requires the help of the operating system to switch from one address space to another address space. The main difference between multi-threading and the process is, multi-threading uses single address space and it does not invoke the operating system. But a process switches from threads at different address spaces and requires the help of the operating system to do this switching. So you can say that multi-threading is a lightweight process and it is smaller than the process. There are three types of multi-threading. The first one is fine-grained multi-threading. The second one is coarse-grained multi-threading. The third one is simultaneous multi-threading. In fine-grained multi-threading, switching between threads happen on each instruction and switching happens on every clock cycle. The switching is done in a round robin fashion that is the first instruction from the first thread is executed then the first instruction from the second thread is executed and it continues until the first instruction in the last thread completes. Then again it comes to the first thread the second instruction is executed then it goes to the second instruction of the second thread. Like that, the instructions are execu executed. So the main advantage in this case is, if any thread is stalled, stalled means uh, the, that particular instruction the, will not be available. In that case, that instruction is skipped in that thread and uh, the execution continues with the next thread. This is called interleaving and this approach improves the throughput. The main disadvantage in this method is when the threads are ready to execute the next instruction without any stall, should wait until other threads complete. This slows down the execution of the individual thread. The overall performance is improved, but the individual threads will be slowed down. To avoid this, the 
Next method is used that is coarse grained multi threading. In this case, threads are switched only when costly stalls occur. So, switching for each instruction will be avoided and hence the slowdown of individual thread execution is avoided. The new thread starts only after the pipeline is filled up. When the first thread is over and it switches to the next thread, the execution starts only after the pipeline for the second thread is filled up and the current instruction completes its, its execution. This requires some time. So, this is called as startup overhead. The processor issues the instruction from the same thread when shorter stalls occur. So, in this case, the pipeline may be required to emptied or frozen when stalls happen. So, however, the time taken for emptying or making frozen is less compared to the pipeline startup time, that is startup overhead required for the next th thread. So, the cost is minimized here. This approach reduces the penalty of high cost stalls because the pipeline refill time is negligible compared to stall time. The third multi-threading is simultaneous multi-threading. In this case, multiple instructions are executed from independent multiple threads. This uses register renaming. In this case, if the threads are dependent, the dependencies are handled by dynamic scheduling, but it does not switch resources every clock cycle. SMT processors have dynamically scheduled pipelines for thread level parallelism and also instruction level parallelism. These processes have more functional unit to implement this parallelism. Now, see this figure. There are three threads, thread A, thread B and thread C. These threads can be executed independently if stall is permitted. The bottom row shows how these three threads are handled by each type of multi-threading. One row is issued to the pipeline in each clock cycle and this empty row indicates a stall or unused clock cycle. Now, let us see how these three threads are executed when fine-grained multi-threading is used. The first row of thread A is issued to the pipeline and it is executed. Then the first row of thread B is taken and it is brought to the pipeline and executed. Then the first row of thread C is issued to the pipeline and executed. After that, again it comes to thread A. The second row of thread A is issued to the pipeline now. Then second row of thread B is issued to the pipeline and the second row of thread C is issued to the pipeline. After that, again it comes to thread A. The third row of thread A is issued to the pipeline and third row of thread B is issued after that then when it comes to thread C, the third row is an empty row. So, it is skipped. So, in that clock cycle, the thread A is executed. That means it goes to thread A and it takes the next row, that is fourth row, and that row is issued to the pipeline. Then it continues with thread B. 
and thread C also. So whenever there is a star that will be skipped and then it, and the next thread will be executed. Then in the case of coarse grained multi-threading, the set of rows until it faces a stall, all the rows are brought to the pipeline. When it faces stall, then it goes to the next thread. Thread B has four rows. After that, there is a stall. So, all these four rows are issued to the pipeline. Then it will go to thread C. In thread C, only in the third row, stall occurs. So, these two rows, first two rows will be issued to the pipeline and it will be executed. So, like this, set of instructions or set of rows are executed continuously until a costly stall occurs. <coughs> In the case of simultaneous multi-threading, it takes the first row of thread A, but all the four slots in the first row are not used. So, only the first two slots are brought to the pipeline and executed. And in the case of remaining two slots, it is filled with the first row of thread B. But first row of thread B is having three parts. So, all those three parts will be brought here. Only two parts may be accommodated in the first row and the third part will be accommodated in the second row of the pipeline. After that, it goes to thread C. It takes the first row. It has three parts. All the three parts are brought here. After this, it, it will go to thread A and it goes to the second row. In the second row, there is only one part that part is brought here. Then it goes to thread B. It has two parts. Those two parts are brought here. Then it goes to thread C. There is only one part that is brought here and executed. Then it goes to third row of thread A. It has three parts. All the three parts are brought here and put. And then it goes to thread B and third row of thread B. It has only one part and that part is brought here. When it goes to the third row of thread C, it is an empty row. So it is skipped. Then it goes to the fourth row of thread A. Fourth row of fourth row of thread A has only two parts and those two parts are brought here. Then it comes to fourth row of thread B. It has only one part. That part is brought here. It will be executed. Then it comes to thread C, fourth row. It has two parts. But here only one part may be accommodated. So, another, the second part is accommodated in the next row of simultaneous multi-threading. Then, after these two uh, parts, that is fourth row of thread C, it goes to the fifth row of thread A. The fifth row of thread A has four, four parts, but here only three parts may be filled up in this row. It will be filled up. And the fourth part will be uh, put in the next row. When it comes to the fifth row of thread B, there is a stall. That means it is a blank row. It is skipped. And it comes to the fifth row of thread C. It has only one part. That part is brought here. Then it goes to the sixth row of thread A. Actually, it is an empty row, so it is skipped. Then it comes to the sixth row of thread B. There are four parts, but in, the, in this row, only two parts may be accommodated and the remaining two parts will be accommodated in the next row. 
then it comes to the sixth row of thread C and th there is only one part that is brought here and put. So that will be executed. After that, it goes to the seventh row of thread A. Actually, it is a blank or empty row. So it will be skipped and it comes to thread B and it takes the seventh row of thread B. There are two parts and one part is put here since there is no space. Uh, the next part is put in the next row. Then it comes to the seventh row of part thread C. All the three parts may be accommodated here and it will be executed. So like this, the complete uh, clock cycle will be effectively used in simultaneous multi-threading. So it will increase the throughput, but it requires more number of functional units. <laughs>